Okay. So we have questions that come from different topics, and uh, we say that uh, most of these topics here we don't we don't need um, you to use a lot of mathematics that you used to have in high school, senior one, senior two, A level. We, we may not need all that math in most of the cases. Although we cannot hide away from the fact that uh, knowing the content uh, really really does play a great role. So in addition to knowing the content, there are some easier steps that you can use in some of the questions which we may try to attempt without using the, the known methods. Just try to work out somewhere, maybe on the scratch paper, then we simply get the answer straight away. In other words, what I mean is that all these questions that are given to us are multiple choice. So the working doesn't matter. There's no way that they won't give you the method marks, the bonus marks, no. They only look at the final answer. So no matter the method that you've used, then there's no problem there. So what we said was that um, we, we can always solve most of these questions here coming from the answers themselves going backwards the question. In some questions, especially when it comes to equations. So we have integers, we have those subunits there, number line, uh, place values, bases, uh, ratios, LCM, operations. And uh, we've already seen some of the common questions that come there. And then we have geometry, this part here, geometry. Um, normally the questions are all about circle properties and triangles. That's where most of the questions do come from. So we need to really know the content. Uh, sometimes we shall find out like from the examples that we'll be having, we shall find out that actually what you need to use is only a ruler and a protractor. In most cases, in case they've drawn for you the diagram, we shall be seeing those tricks later on in some given questions there. And then for equations, for these ones, we always work backwards. That is the simpler way. Like we saw, we had some questions uh, during the this uh, session. Then statistics, we looked at the mean, the median, the range. Normally those ones there, they just simply try to trick them a little bit, but you know the content. How do you get the mean? It is the total divided by the number. How do you get the median? The median is the number in the middle after arranging the data in order, either ascending or descending. How do you get the range? It is the highest minus the smallest. Then probability, what is probability? This is all about um, a chance. It is the number of items that you want divided by the total. And then the speed rates, questions concerning motion. This one always looks at um, speed, distance, and time. And then of course, the other one is business mathematics. So you have to look at things like uh, the simple interest, the compound interest. Uh, those ones are related to that. Then, um, um, this part here, most of the questions come from this part here. It is a little bit wide, and um, with some of us who were in the class, uh, those ones who have been with me for some time, we've been doing this one um, almost on a weekly basis, maybe twice a week, for some good time, maybe, I, I think it was around um, two months, two months for those people that have been with, but for you, it's a little bit of uh, something that has come up and we need to patch up the gaps. Uh, these people are not joining. Allow me to call one of them and then we'll proceed. So we, 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 can, we can continue with this. We stopped with number, let me check. Uh, let me check, let me check. Uh, we did all these. Yes, we stopped with this number. We stopped with this number. Oh, we were, we were at question 94. Yes, 94, yes, that is what we were on. And uh, we were left with um, an interpretation which I want us to begin with when these guys uh, join us. So meanwhile, let me try to look for one number. Um, 
let me just bring another number at random and then we we go through it briefly as we're waiting for them. Uh, let me get something and then we proceed. All right, so uh, let's go back to our question here. It was question 94. We had left off when we had agreed that um, uh, selling price, cost price, profit, loss, they are related by some equations, which you can actually I think of, for example, um, if we have this, let me first erase this. First erase this. For example, in case we have, um, let's say that we have um, uh, the cost price of an item maybe being uh, 1,000 shillings, if that is the cost price. And um, if you have made a profit, a profit of maybe 10%, a profit of 10%, it means that your selling price has got to be higher than this. That is what we agreed on. And we said that uh, our selling price is actually equal to the 100% plus the 10% of the cost price. Mr. Mr. William, I hope that we agree on this. So this is the same as 110% of the cost price. So this is the same as 110 out of 100 times 1,000. So in this case, we shall see that uh, in case we cancel out these, we shall remain with our answer as 1100 zero shillings, implying that our profit is actually uh, equal to 100 shillings. In other words, Profit is equal to selling price minus the cost price. 100, uh, 1,100 minus 1,000, the profit that you've made here is 100 shillings. I hope that that is fine with you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in case, we're, in case we've made a profit, you simply add to 100%. What if you have made a loss, a loss of maybe, for example, 10%, it means that for this case, our cost price will be equal to 100% minus the 10% of, sorry, this is the selling price. It will be, uh, it will be 100% minus 10% of the cost price. And this is the same as 90% of the cost price, meaning therefore that this is the same as 90 over 100 times uh, 1,000. So when these zeros here cancel out, remain with our answer as 900. So here you can see that the selling price is less than the cost price. So an omega or cause a lower C. So what my, my emphasis here is on this. My emphasis is on this, that um, if you have made a loss, you subtract the percentage. If you've made a profit and this percentage is of the cost price not the selling price, as you had said in the other uh, example that you had tried to give me. And if I made a profit, then you simply add the percentage. You simply okay. add the percentage. Now, going back to our question, uh, going back to our question, uh, the question was saying that um, a lady by the way, are you seeing properly all I should change my screen size? I know if I change the right mode here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it is fine. All right. All right. Okay. okay. So um we were saying this that um in this question here, the person sold the item two times. At first, he sold at a loss, but then they're saying that he regretted or she regretted. And uh, she assumed that in case she had sold at a given price, what would be the, the profit in that case? So for this, what we do is that uh, we first of all try to interpret the question and we say that um, the, the, the old selling price, old selling price is equal to three, four, hundred shillings, um, 340,000 shillings. And uh, the percentage loss is going to be called 15%. So she made a loss. Now they're saying that find the profit, 
she would have made if she had sold. So here we're having selling price. Even here we're having selling price, meaning that I've not been given the cost price, the original cost. So which means therefore that our new selling price is going to be called 434,000 shillings. Uh, they're asking for the profit that she made, if she had made this. So we don't know the cost price. We don't know the cost price. But what we know is that our profit, it is the same as the selling price minus the cost price. And the assumption here is that the selling price is bigger than the cost price. So hmm. sometimes you need to read the question and internalize it, try to reason it out. And then afterwards you apply either the content, that is the mathematics, and then, or you apply the logic, a quicker method, a shorter method. You skip all the known methods and then you simply plug in and then you play. Now, this is what we have. So we need to get the cost price. But using this information here, what we know is that our selling price is going to be equal to 100% minus 15% of the cost price. And um, you're going to allow me to write the other side because this, this, um, this, uh, this, this space is, is not enough for me. Let me write here, let me write here. Um, if I get a new page, insert page below. Okay. So, um, so our selling price is equal to 100%. I think I should change the color minus 10% of the cost price. So meaning that we had our money, which was uh, 340,000. Yeah, 15%. Oh, sorry, sorry, it is 15%. Sorry, in the question, yeah, thank you. It was 15%. So a uh, 340,000, that was the selling price. So which means that you shall be having 85 out of 100 times the cost price. Uh, is that fine? Have I skipped a step? Oh, it is fine. Yes, it's fine. It is fine. All right. This is this is equal to. Now, uh, what we need to get here is the cost price. Then afterwards, we use that one in our new scenario, and then we try to get the profit. So here we shall simply say that uh, this is the same as three four zero, which is the same as eighty five. This is eighty five, not eight point five. Eighty five cost price divided by one hundred. So we're going to cross multiply, or we can multiply by one hundred such that this one cancels out. We might do the same on the other side of the equation. So we shall end up with this times this, giving us uh, how many zeros? This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 34 million, which is equal to 85 CP. Now, since we want C since we want to get the CP, we are going to divide both sides. We shall divide by 85. Divide by 85. So shall have that uh, our CP is equal to 34 million divided by 85. Divide by 85. And uh, we can reduce this figure here. Mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can reduce the yes. Uh -huh. Someone is saying that by five, what do we get? Let me check, let me check, let me check. So, back here is a calculator. Ah, uh, no. The only calculator. The only calculator. So, 85 divided by that red is not good. Let me use black. So, 85 divided by five, by five, one. Okay. Let me just say that by five. What do I get here? Is one. Uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. Then 35 divided by five? Seven. Yes. Then this one by five, we shall get six remainder four. Six, six times five, we get 30. Mm. Yes, so remainder four, so we shall be having our four hands. So, so we shall have eight and then the rest are zeros. Yes. Yes, so that is what we get. Now, our cost price will be equal to 68. Uh, 800. But again, we have this 17. Which other figure can we use? I think we are done. We, can, we shall go back to our friend Grace's method, long method. <laughs> yes, I, I baptized it your name. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> see, okay, okay. That thing, that thing that you, when you divide 68 by 17, uh -huh. get to four. Yes, we get four, very good. Yes, that is correct. Actually, you can simply say that 17 plus 17, uh, here we get 34. These are, so these are two 17s, all right? Now, what if you have 34 plus 34? You'll get 68. So these are, these are, that means that we shall simply be having two and then the two, which means that four. this is a four. So four times this, we shall be having 68. So if you know that you're using, you're, you've got something correct, because in case you're sure of the method, then simply use that. So meaning that either for our CP will be equal to 400,000. Mm. So that is our cost price. Now, let's go back to the question. The question was saying that, um, find the profit she would have made if she had sold the radio at 400. So our new, our profit will be equal to selling price minus the cost price, which you have got. So this is the same as four, three, four, then minus the 400. So the answer that we get here is 34,000. And this is the answer. Hey. <laughs> Uh -huh. So yes. enough, like, all that stuff. The time, <laughs> the, the time you're supposed to, you're supposed to do the question in only two minutes. But like you see the questions, right. some of them you can do them in less than a minute. Others you can take even four minutes. Others you count, you can start counting the fingertips. <laughs> And and can be. Can be. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. And, 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 and for us who and for us who are doing the physical papers, that's where we are lucky. Because in case you're doing in case you're doing an online paper, then you cannot skip. You cannot skip. And if time is running out, then you simply guess. Because in case you leave a mm. number, in case you leave a number and the answer, then that is a very grave mistake. You cannot skip. So even in this paper here, make sure that you answer all the questions from the first one up to the last one. Mm. But, but, but the advantage that you have is that you can always, first of all, do what you think is right as quickly as possible. Mm. And then afterwards, you come back and try to patch up the gaps, I may say. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that is what you are supposed to do. Okay, uh, let's go to the next number here. Uh, this number is about ratios. This number is about ratios. And um, it is saying that Alice spent 40,000 on three items. That is, uh, the, in, the case, in the case you added the money that she used to buy milk, eggs, and sugar, it is 40,000. But that amount is given in the ratio of four to three. It is just like when you have 1,000 and you have your two children, and you give them the money in the ratio, maybe, for example, uh, maybe six to two or one to two. It is the same thing here now. For this case, what we do, uh, it, is, it is like this, that um, our ratio is two. Okay. First of all, what comes first? What comes first? It is milk which comes first. Mm. So I'll, I will come here and write milk. The next one is eggs. 
The next one is sugar. Then afterwards, I'll have the total. So the ratio tells me that milk is four, uh, eggs, that is two, and then sugar, that is a three. The total of all of these ones here, what do we get here when we add them? Nine? Yes, we get nine, that is correct. So which means that we are interested in this one here, in eggs. So which means that if this is the ratio, then the amount of money that was spent on eggs is simply a fraction of the total. It is a fraction of the total. So we shall simply say here that for eggs or for E, we shall have the amount of money as two out of nine times 40,000. Yes, times 40,000. So this is the same as uh, when you multiply the numerator shall have 88,000 divided by nine. Now, is that one divisible? What? Divisible, but you get points, points. <laughs> yes. So that, that means that it is not, that means that it is not divisible. It is not divisible. And actually at this point here, okay, let's first do this, then I give you some tips on uh, how do we find that this number is divisible by this. But first, let's first use long division and we see whether we can get the answer. So this is nine, this is eight. And by the way, since you're resting Agnes time, uh, you may not complete the actual division. Mm. So if you get a hint, just, just go on. Now here, uh, how many times does eight go in nine? Seven. Eight. First, of, first of all, you can think of nine, nine times nine, what do you get? Eight and nine. Uh, you get eight or one. Eight or one. Nine times nine, you get eight or one. So which means that Nine instead of the nine, shall write a number which is less than that. So shall write eight. I want I want to choose suitable colors here. I will choose to have eight. So I'll get eight. Uh, I'll get my eight. I'll put it here. So eight times nine, I'll get eight. No, seventy-two. I think seventy-two. You can get, for example, eight times ten. You get uh, eight. Okay. So that means that when you get eight times nine, you simply subtract an eight from here and you get 72. So that is what you get. Now, when I, I subtract here, I'll be having my eight, then the three zeros. Is that fine? Yep. Yes. Now, this means that if, if I get the first number, how many numbers am I supposed to be leaving out? I'll be leaving, uh, first of all, these ones are done. So I'll be leaving this one, this one, and then this one, this one, this one, and this one. You can see that before I go to the point. Mm. So this means that this number here is in eight thousands. Mm. So you come here, this number is more than 10,000. So this is out, this is out, this is also out. Now you're remaining with this one and this one, which are in eight thousands. Which means that you have to you have to divide again. So eight divided by nine again, you'll get your eight because you've already done that. And then the coming in numbers, which means therefore that this one is actually also out. So our answer therefore is this. You don't have to conclude. You don't have to conclude because you don't have time. I see. You don't have time. So that is how we choose uh, that one there. In case you have time, you want to confirm, you can you can <laughs> confirm, but I'm um, telling you, you'll be just uh, doing yourself a disservice. Okay. I think we can go to the next number. We can go to the next number. The next number is... Um, 
96. It is the same as what we just done. This is also a pattern, it's a sequence. And we just need to identify what did they do here? Maybe someone can assist us. I know we've seen this paper already, so you've gone through. Maybe you've tried to uh, find that maybe this one is. Can, by the way, in case you've done something and I, you feel like it will be taking us time, I can skip it. But, but for this one here, the first figure is a quarter, then four over nine, then nine out of 16, then. Is there anything common in the numerators? Not really, because from here to here, from here to here, we add a three. From here to here, we add a five. Then from here, we, are, we add a seven. Three plus five plus seven. The next number, would be, the next number would be nine. Yeah. It would be nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's let's first leave that alone. How about the denominators? Is there anything common? Mm, yeah. There's something common like uh, the first one, the denominator two times. Okay, two, two squared, yes. Two squared. Uh, the network is poor, but... The but is <laughs> three times five, mm -hmm. five squared. So the next one will be six, six squared. Square. Wow. Now, if the next one is six squared, that means that you shall be having 36. All right? I thought I want to answer. 36 and the numerator 25. Uh -huh. Now, someone, someone has said that Sita one did not answer because someone is already seeing <laughs> the denominators. So if, if we had said that here we have a positive nine, do we have a nine here? It is not there. Okay? It is not there. So our nine was wrong. So we would simply conclude that our answer oh, When you two. add nine uh -huh. on 16, it's 25. Oh. It is a plus on 16, it's 25. Yes, yes 25, yes, yes. So that is- uh, also squared up. One squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared. <laughs> Simply that. <laughs> so you can either- Same add, thing. You can, you can either add or you can either subtract. Mm. I'm sorry, add, or you can take the squares. So, any method- We're asking for the sixth term. Uh, this what, is, what is that? You hold, hold on. They're saying that, mm -hmm. fine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So this is- um, We're this, supposed to go next step. This, this, this is number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. So the sixth Seven. one- Seven so squared. Uh -huh. 49 and 49. So where do we have 49 is here. So our answer is A. <clears throat> actually, actually, uh, Wilson has reminded me that uh, sometimes you need to read the question up to mm. the up to the end. Because sometimes you they, they oh. give they, they give they give this they give an answer. I mean you may get a, an answer middle way, and that answer is part of the alternatives like what you have done here. So we need to read the question to the end. That is, that is, um, that is, that is the goal of this. All right, thank you, sir. Now, I think we can go to the next number. <clears throat> so this, this is about patterns. It's about patterns. Maybe concerning that. Uh, I'm waiting for number for subsets, those, those things. I see that I've seen them. <laughs> eh? Oh, these numbers are there. What? These numbers are there. I, I hope that we shall reach. I hope that we shall reach the rest just a bit, a bit faster. And we see. Mm. Okay. Um, how do you interpret this one here? Should 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 I skip it or? Let carry the customer. 
for the first 100 units. And then 10 shillings for the subsequent, subsequent the rest. In other words, um, whatever comes first, if you rate this one to maybe in the case you're selling something that may be your company there, and uh, you, you may give, I mean, if someone is buying less than a given amount, it may be on the regular price. If someone is buying in the bulk, then may give a discount to the rest. It's just something similar to this. So um, the person says that uh, the bill was amounting to this amount here. The bill was amounting to this. But then they're asking for how many kilowatt hours of power did he consume? Let's say that for the first 100, the cost is going to be called 25 times 100. What do we get here? 2,500, 2, yes. So these are the first 100 units. Now, mm -hmm. the total cost 5, is 5,000. That means yeah. that for the rest of the units, it was 5,000 minus 2,500, mm. which gives us 2,500. Okay. But then they're saying that each, un each unit, it's 10. Each, each extra is 10. Mm. So which means that number of units will be called 2,500 divided by 10, divided by 10 which gives us 250, mm. meaning that the total units Total units will be equal to the first 100 That's and then 50. plus 250, which gives us 350 units. Mm. And our answer, yes, our answer is here. Mm. So that is what we can do. Actually, one of the students that I was having before uh, gave me a similar number concerning insurance that insurance, a family paid this amount of money as premium in a year. I don't know that anyone has seen that similar question there. I don't have it here with me. In 2020. No, not 2020. Is it 2020? 2020, I think, in the first 20 numbers, around th number 13. Oh, it was in problem solving. Mm. No, number 13, number 14, the, those the first 20 questions. Uh, 2020, really? Or 20, yes. Anyway, anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I've Except seen it. Thanks. If someone has it, you can share it with us and then we'll go through it now. But if not, then maybe. Uh, okay. The next number. Um, how, how would we do this? And this is a common question, by the way. We call this one difference of two squares. This is what the first is square, this is the second square. If you're subtracting, then you call that one difference of two squares. And uh, about difference of two squares, maybe I can, first of all, uh, just give you something small here that in case you have A plus B and then A minus B, how would you expand this? Multiply. Yes, please. Yes. It's multiplying A times A. Uh-huh. Yes, a times B, uh -huh. then B times A. Yes. B times B. Yes. In other words, you first of all handle this one and it multiplies everything here. So in other words, it is A times A minus B, then plus this one here, it is a plus. So you add plus B into A minus B. So this is the same as A times A. Uh, minus a times b, uh, then plus b times a, and then plus b times negative b. So this is the same as a squared minus a b plus a b. This is the same as a times b. So the same as a b, then minus b squared. So from here, you can see that this one here is canceling out with this. So end up with a squared minus b squared. So in other words, Whenever you see a difference of two squares, for example, a squared minus b squared, just know that this is the same as a plus b 
in two brackets a minus b. Mm. That is that is the conclusion on this. And an example on this can be that, for example, what is the square root of four hundred and uh, um, Okay, let me just give a simpler one. 49 squared. This is the same as 50. No, 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 no. Oh, just wanted to give a simpler number here. Okay, let me just leave this a little bit. Okay, I will, I will, I will just show you a, a similar number maybe later on if I, if I get it. I don't want to think of something. Now, here we're having um, a squared minus b squared. I hope that you see this properly. Yeah. So where there is a, we shall put it this. Where there is b, we shall put it this. Now, I know that it is somehow hard to square this alone and also square this one alone. It is really uh, challenging. That's why this method here comes into play. It comes into play. So we shall simply substitute here and we say that this is the same as, uh, we have A is uh, 3.705 squared minus 2.295 squared. So this is the same as, uh, two point no three point seven zero five plus two point I'm running out of space I'm running out of space okay two point two nine five then times times three point seven zero five minus two point two nine five. I think let me just let me just uh, paste it to the other side. Let's just let's just work from here. Yeah, it is here. So I hope that we can see this. Yes, okay. So we have our a squared minus b squared, which is the same as a minus b or a plus b into a minus b. So uh, we shall have 3.705 plus 2.295. So this is what we have here. Mm. Uh, and then we shall also have 3.705 minus 2.295. So meaning that because you have uh, 3.705 squared minus 2.295 squared, this is the same as having A and then you subtract. So what do we get here when you subtract? Five minus five, you get zero. You mean six yeah. here, you have 10, so 10 minus nine, you get one, six minus two, you get four, then he'll have one. Is that fine? I thought we were supposed to be adding there. Hey, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just, just, just change the what? Just change the <laughs> equation to the down now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is uh, five minus five, you get is zero. Then we have 10, here we have six. 10 minus nine, you get one. Then six minus two, you get four. And then here we have one. Then here, when you're adding, this is 10, carry yeah. one. This is also yeah. 10, carry one. This is also 10, carry one. And this gives us six. Mm -hmm. So we shall have six times 1.41. Yes. Now the simplest method here, if, if, if you're multiplying with a decimal, the simplest method here is to remember that uh, 1.41 is the same as 141 divided by 100. Okay. Is, that, is that fine? Yep. 
Yes. So you can simply get my six times 141 out of 100. So you simply get your 141 times six. And then you shall be having six times one, we get six. Six times four, that is 12, plus 12, that is 24. Then you carry two. Is that fine? I don't know. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. Mm. So in case you get this answer here, then you remember that this is 846 divided by 100, which is the same as 8.46. Let's go check and see whether I have that 8.46. Um, 8.46, yes, it is here. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> okay, should we go on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. The next number is this one here. Now, this number here is an equation, first of all, because there's this equal sign. There's this equal sign. Um, let, let me call you at 10. Let me call you at 10. So uh, this, this number here, uh, it is an equation first of all. And the, remember what we said about equations. If you have an equal sign, the best way to solve this equation here is to work backwards is to work backwards. And for this case, this is what we have. I can take you back to this. This is, um, I think I can just copy the whole question again. Let me copy the whole question. Just to save time. Uh, Yeah, so uh, on this question here, uh, let, let me just copy this question and then I paste it to the other side. Uh, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Uh -huh. Yeah, let me copy it like this. Okay. So this question remind us, uh, reminds us of what we did uh, some time back. And um, it's about indices, it is about uh, equations and so on. So one thing that you need to remember is that, uh, I, I hope that uh, you remember this. One thing that we remember here is that our two is the same as two power one. Is that fine? So here there is yeah. a one. There's a one here, which means that mm -hmm. we have to, we have to ex, we have to express this one here in terms of two. So thirty two. If we do factorization, divide it by two. What do we get? Sixteen. Sixteen divided by two. Eight. Uh huh. Eight by two. Four. We get four. Yes. Then after here, I get two, and then by two, you get one. So which means that our 32 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I think 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the same as 2 to the power of 5. Yes. That one, I agree. So this is the same as 2 to the power of 5 to power 3 over 5, then divide by x to the power of a half equals to two power one. Of course, here we can see that this is the same as, remember indices during the day. Mm. What, what, what do we get here in case you, you remember? Five cancel. Okay, yes, the same as two power five times three out of five, yes. Divided by x power half equals to two power one. So this five here passes out with this many with two power three divided by x power half equals to two power one. Now, this is, <laughs> this is the equation that we have. 
when it is simplified, there's an X in our, in our equation. So the question is saying that solve for X. Now, if you had solved for X, I want to do a lot of mathematics, which I can do right now. But for purposes of time, I'm just going to remind you of what we do. We say that in case you have any unknown in the equation, simply work backwards. Simply put this X, this 16, where there's X, all put this eight, all put this 32, all put this four, where we have the X. And then you check, do you get the two power one? If no, if no, then you continue trying out the others. If yes, then you can simply stop there. Okay. Um, if, if we do that, first of all, what is 16 in terms of two? 30, 30, 30, 32 is the same as two to the power of five. This four here is the same as two to the power of two because it is two times two. This one here is the same as, can you let me know this? Power four. 16 is two to the power of four. Uh -huh. Two to the power of four, yes. And then eight. Two to the power of three. Two to the power of three, that is correct. That is correct. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to put my 16. If X is equal to 16, which is the same as two to the power of four, I'm going to put it there and I see, do I get the two to power one? So I'll have my two to power three divided by two to the power four, power a half. What do I get here? It's the same as two to the power of three divided by, by two, one, by two, two. So I'll get my two to power two. If you are dividing, what do we do again? Indices. No. We, we, we multiply. I know. Yes, again. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same we as subtract. Yes. Subtract. Yes. Subtract here. Yes. So this is the same as two power three minus two which will give us two to the power of one. And since you've got two already, you don't have to try out even all the others. So simply come and square, I mean, circle that. So a, a quick recap here, we said <clears throat> that um, when it comes to indices, indices, drop logarithms, Stroke logarithms. We say that addition, uh, division goes with subtraction. Where you have multiplication, this one goes with addition. That is what we said. This is one, this is two. So here we've been dividing, so we subtract. So that is how we can solve equations. If you have an equation, simply work backwards. Don't suffer with the math. Don't suffer with the math. Okay, I hope that this is fine. We can move on. Yes. All right. So our answer is um, 16. Please, in case of anything, just ask. And uh, we proceed. All right, 100, a plot of this one here. What figure do you think this is? This is under geometry. Katu, 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 okay, Mr. Blair, I guess in Agula Eka Eka Mo eka mo limo plotin meka. Plot of land thirty two. No 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 no. I'm just I'm just in the. Eka manan. Mo limo plotin manan na nobu guamu. Aha, nobu guamu. Now what's my to plot it? Plot of this vector forty. The um fifty by a hundred. So it's the same as getting the one side of the rectangle. 
This is the length and the width, and then the smaller one. Uh, let me actually even uh -huh. do, let me even do it inside there, and then you get a smaller one like this using a different color, something like this. So you have the length and then the width. Now the question says that a plot of land 30 meters by 12 meters is divided into square gardens of each four sides, four meters. What do you mean about a square? Four sides are equal. Yes, four sides are equal. Each all sides are equal, very good. So which means therefore that uh, we shall simply have <coughs> the number is equal to the big area divided by the small area. of each. So in other words, you have 32 times 12 divided by four times four, because our area is equal to length times width is all side times side. So they're all, rect they're all rectangles. So here we simply, uh, you may not even try to multiply, you can just uh, divide straight away that by Two, I get two by two, I get six by two, I get one by two, I get three by two, I get one, uh, two by two, I get 16 by two, I get one by two, I get eight. So remain with the uh, eight times three over one times one, which is the same as 24, Four. which is the same as 24. So our answer becomes that. Okay. If, if you remember this question here, this question here is the same as what we had, I think, before. Let me try to check through and see. Uh, they're all about ratios. They're all about ratios. Let me check, let me check. Aha, uh, uh -huh, yes, it is the same as this one here. It is, it is the same as that. <clears throat> so you get the whole divided by the smaller one to get the number of items. Okay. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> we can move on. <clears throat> yeah, you want uh, What is the first mark? <laughs> 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 the pass mark, the pass mark is sixty percent. Ah, the pass you mark. So you just you pass the other ones. This one you just get two. Sixty <laughs> percent. <laughs> uh, this, this is how. This is which percent? The the, the the number section is how many in is how much percentage of the paper. Uh, remember that they are, they are let, me, let me try to share with you this, let me see. Uh, this is 2020, let me try to check here. Uh, all sections, what see the sections? Uh, these are the instructions, the section is, okay. There is uh, okay. there are five sections. Of course, there is a uh, problem solving and data sufficiency. This is the, the math. math. This is the math bit of it. Now, this uh, one okay. is, is going to contribute thirty percent. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> normally, normally each question that you do in this region here, each question carries sometimes one mark one mark sometimes i don't know how they compute that and then the others um sometimes the question can carry a half a mark uh, or they can combine questions that get one mark so just know that this part alone is contributing 30 percent percent and um please you, you need to be you need to know your strength if your strength is the other side, please maximize it there as well. But as well, don't forget this side as well. <laughs> mm. So this part here needs practice. 
because there are many things to look at, uh, yet the time is limited. That's why uh, people normally start it a little bit earlier. It says advisable to start with it. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying that people. Um, <laughs> if, if, if you have not been revising this part for some time, it is better that you start with the other regions. Because, mm. because in case you start with this, you may be, uh, be discouraged from the start. Mm. Yes. So beginning with what you're confident with. Okay. Uh, the next number. This is about motion, speed, distance, time. Speed, distance, and time. And uh, maybe I can just chip in something small, still connected to, uh, to ratios concerning conversion of the units. Conversion of units. But anyway, um, how do we get speed? If someone says that a vehicle is moving at 100 kilometers per hour, what does it mean? Distance over time. Yes, distance over time, meaning that our speed is equal to distance out of time. And uh, if I'm to use a triangle, it is given like this distance out of time. So this speed is equal to distance over time. If you're getting the time, time is the same as distance over speed. If you're getting the distance, it's the same as speed times time. In other words, what I'm saying is this, that um, what is below here, Oh, let me change the color. What is below here is that we are dividing. And then what is here is means that we are multiplying. But anyway, the question says that find the average speed. So all we need to remember is that our speed, speed is equal to distance divided by time. Now in the question, do we have the time? Yep. Yes, what time is it? 10 minutes. Basically 10 minutes. From 9 a.m. to 10.20 a.m. Um, one hour, 20 minutes. Yes, one hour, 20 minutes, correct. One hour, 20 minutes. But according to these units here, everything should be in kilometers per hour. So we have to change this one to a fraction. In other words, in hours. Mm. So how do we do that? That is 80 divided by 60. Yes. Because in one hour, there are 60 minutes. minutes. So 60 plus 20, you get 80 minutes. So we have our time as one hour and the 20 minutes which is the same as uh, 60. Okay, let me just say that 80 divided by 60. I hope that we're together on this. Uh, in, case, in case someone is having challenges, please uh, let us share. So here the zero cancels out. Then by, by two, we get three by two, we get four. So this is the same as four out of three hours. So our distance is 120 divided by four out of three. This is a fraction. This is the same as 120 divided by four out of three, which is the same as 120 times three out of four. I remember, I remember she told me this, yes. When you're dividing, you multiply by the reciprocal. So by two, I get two, by two, I get 16, by two, I get one, by two, I get 30. So you have 30 times three, which gives me 90 kilometers per hour. Yeah. What is the Yes. So um, don't, don't, don't use a calculator anywhere. <laughs> don't use a calculator anywhere. So you have to go with only the mathematics sets. Uh, is what money in tuition or what? Are they just, <laughs> do, they, do these things work really? <laughs> do they, do they feel very much because of this demand? <laughs> they want money. <laughs> 
then they need money. Do they really? Or why it is just a standard that was set? Huh? Okay. So I was saying that uh, this is our question. Let me share this. Active Inspire. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, it is here. Let me paste the question here. Okay, this is our question. I hope that you can see it clearly. Yes. Yes. Now, um, in case you've been given, in case they've drawn for you a diagram like this one here, in most cases, that diagram is on scale. In other words, it is, it is accurate in most cases. But now for this one here, it is not accurate, meaning that you have to rely on your content. That's where content becomes a part of the, of the working. Now, if you try to measure this one here, I'm using my ruler. You can see the ruler. And this, mm -hmm. and this ruler is giving me that, in case I have five centimeters, it is the same as this figure here, which is 80. Eight, I'm, I'm just quoting this one from the figure here. Mm. Uh, approximately 80, let me say, approximately 80. Now, here I have my 10. If I do this and I try to do, I mean, to, to measure the horizontal, if I got 80 there, here I'm supposed to get times two because 10 is five times two. Uh, now, if I get to one, if I get to one, uh, one sixty here, incidentally, it is not. Uh, this is one twenty. But assuming, assuming that it was, assume, assuming that it was one hundred and sixty, uh, then you would simply come and measure from here uh, to here. You would simply come and measure from there to there. Mm. But of course, knowing knowing the that if five centimeters uh, represents maybe eighty, all eighty represents five. How about one? It will represent five divided by eighty. See so what you did. Mm -hmm. So here we simply come and measure and you get, for example, this figure here is uh, 140. So we'll get your five out of 80 times 140. So whatever you get will be the answer. Come and pick it from here. That, that, is, that is what you should do. That is in the case it was on scale and um, Sometimes if it is the angle, I can take away this. Sometimes if it is the angle, you simply need to come and use your protractor. Incidental, I've rubbed it, let me just put it back. Yes, like that. You just need to come and use your protractor that you measure this one is uh, 90. So this one is 90. I've tried to measure here, it is 90. So in the case they want you to answer maybe this question here, this angle here, and it is part of the solution. You simply transfer a protractor and measure, and then you choose the answer. <clears throat> so that is, that, that, that is what you can do. Now, trouble is here that this one and this one do not correlate. So they're not in, um, they are not on scale, so you should always first try out. You should always first try out, but uh, normally most of them are on on what on scale. No, um, for a triangle, what do you know about the triangle? Actually, let me just go back and uh, read the other side. 
for a triangle, what do we need to know about a triangle? Uh, let me write here. Right here. So what do we need to know about a triangle? This is what we need to know, that if it is a right angled triangle, this symbol here means 90 degrees, or is this where it faces the longest side is what we call the hypotenuse or what we call the C. Is always given it as C, in other words, from A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. This is what called the Pythagoras theorem for triangles. That is what called the Pythagoras theorem. And the longest side is what you call the C. So this one can be interchanged. You can either call this one A or B. You can either call this one A or B, but not repeat. Uh -huh. Yes, not repeat. Now, a trick, a question is here. If this is A, this will be B, this will be C. So what's it? Mm. Okay. Mm. Let me write it here. If this is A, this will be B, this will be C. The longest side is always the C. So the question says that um, find the length S from here to here. But what we know is that C squared is the same as S squared plus B squared. So C squared is the same as five squared plus 10 squared. What is five squared? 25. Five. What is 10 squared? 100. 100. So when you add the two, you'll be getting 125. So, so meaning that our C will be the square root of 125. You square this, you square this. Now, trouble is here. How, how do you get the square root of 20, 125? How do you get the square root of 125? No, the, the, the trick here is this. Just use the known values. You know that uh, you have 125, okay? A figure which is less than this is 100, which has a perfect square. Mm. For example, this is the same as 10 times 10. So the square root of 100 is the same as 10. So what you did? Yes. Now, if you go to this other side, the square root of 11, this, this, this figure is uh, between 100 and something. Uh, 11 squared, what do you get? 121. Yes, you get 121. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> so which means that this figure here is still less than this. So what you need? Mm -hmm. So uh, how about 12 squared? 124. 124, no, it is 144. 144, 144. sorry. Yes, 144. So which means that um, if this figure here that you've got, uh, let me first erase this. 11.2. <laughs> you already got an idea of what I'm going to, of what I'm going to yeah. say. <laughs> so, you have, so you have 11, you have 12. So 125, this is 121, this is 144. <laughs> So our answer should be between 11 and 12. So this one is out, this one is out, this one is uh, out. out, this one is out. You simply conclude this is the answer. <laughs> so that is what you do. Unless, unless if it is somehow kilos. And mm -hmm. I've remembered that. And unless if there are two of them. Pythagoras theory. Uh -huh. That is the Pythagoras theorem. Yes. But again, again, what did you need to remember about triangles? That is another thing. Because this time around, they have brought about the Pythagoras theorem. Next time, mm -hmm. they'll bring about something else. Yeah. So if this is, um, if this is maybe angle, x, this is y, this is z, you need to remember that uh, x plus y plus z gives us 180 degrees. You know that total angles in a triangle 
give us 180 degrees. That's one. That is one thing. <coughs> that is one thing. And then if this one is M, if this one is M, then our M is the same as Z plus Y. So this is this is the interior. This is the this is the exterior angle. It is equal to sum of two opposite interior angles. And then for, and then for a line, a straight line. For example, this one here. This angle is x. This angle is m. You need to remember that m plus x is the same as one hundred eighty degrees angles on a straight line. Again, the mass of the mass of the mass of the Okay, 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 okay. Uh, there's what to call the exterior angles, there's what to call interior angles, there's what to call polygonies. So, we're going to mass, we're going to You can uh, use the idea of exterior angles, interior angles to find the number of sides. In a polygon, but this is what we can remember about um, a triangle briefly. Then maybe, if remember, if you have this triangle like this, I don't know whether Grace is still there. Grace, I tell you, let me see. Okay, if this is A B C, if this is A B C, now if they say that. A B is equal to B C. If A B is equal to B C, and this angle here is uh, maybe X, this is Y, this is uh, Z. We normally use a symbol that this one here is the same as this. Mm. Mm. Now, if if that is the case, then it means. Then it means that our angle X is the same as angle Z. So these angles here, they must be equal. Uh, I see. So our castor come here, then the rest is application. The rest is application. And then maybe something still to remember here is that area of a triangle is given by a half times base times the height. This is the height, this is the base. This is the height, this is the base. So area is equal to a half base height. Mm. Yes. And then maybe for a trapezium, it is still somehow connected to this. A trapezium looks like this. It looks like this. This is the side H, this is the side A, this is the side B. So the area is equal to a half times H times A plus B. A is equal to a half H into A plus B. That is if a trapezium. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Blair, how many papers have you gone through? Let's go back a bit. Yes. Tap on, tap on. Ah, <laughs> there. <clears throat> Madam, Madam, was a Blair, how, uh, how many papers have you gone through so far? <laughs> if, you've seen, if you've seen some past papers, Actually, you'll find and see that uh, a question can even come on that. A question can come on that. 
affair. Then Catalano is Xema Catono. It's Xema Catono, Sarkoz. If this is all, Grace or Comio. By the way, deeper and deeper. Okay. Okay. Um, diameter. <coughs> uh, Wilson, did you say diameter? Do you remember diameter? The diameter. How about that? Diameter is equal by what? <laughs> diameter is equal to R plus R. Uh -huh. You know that is to R. And this is the line. The line. Yes, line, uh, line passing through the center. Okay. Through the center, and it is touching the axis. <coughs> the edges. What? Because it's about the edges. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, through the center, touching the edges. Touching the edges. But in the case they bring a question concerning circles, they're not going to use the word edges. Instead, they are going to use the word axis. Oh, mm. you will be seeing with one axe. Now, area of a circle is given by pi r squared. Mm -hmm. Where pi is the same as 22 over 7. Uh -huh. Or 3.14. Yeah. Then, perimeter... What you call the circumference? That mm. is the length around the figure. Now, now the matter is the perimeter wall. Waka. It is passing around your boundary. <coughs> this is length. Is a of long and go. Taban. Yes, please. Is a word of long and go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so this one is given it, by pi, pi d. Pi diameter, right? Eh? Yes, where d is the diameter. Okay. Yes. Now, if, if you have seen some past paper questions, I don't know how many you've seen, but uh, they bring questions which you may not even try to recall in case you're not even through. But what I'm doing here is just the basics, just in case you see something similar, then you try to relate. And, mm -hmm. like, and, and like we've said, you always begin by doing those ones which are very simple to you. Now, as you're trying to end the paper, you're trying to struggle with the number about circles and then try to remember diameter, area, perimeter. That's why you're trying to look at this. <laughs> but, but still, I'm going to give you a trick again. It is the same, it is the same trick. It is the same trick everywhere. Now, another thing that we need to remember is that if this is our circle and you have the, this is the diameter. Remember the diameter passes through the center. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then this is your radius. Now, if you have an angle which is touching here, uh, for example, like this, let me just use a thick line, like this. This is the center O. Oh, if you have an angle here as angle X, and this angle here as angle Y, at least just write down this somewhere that Y is equal to two times X. All Y is equal to, okay, just that, just that. Or you can say that your x is the same as a half y. Now, concerning this, again, uh, let me go the let, let me let me go this way again. Active inspire. Uh, no, not this. Sorry. 
Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Yes, I'm here. Uh, still, when I go to this, and they have given you the triangle like this, and you already said that this angle Y, angle Y is always equal to two times the angle X. Now, sometimes they may give you one angle, and then they say that find the other angle, total one, and in case you've forgotten the formula, just simply come and use the protractor. Mm. Come on, use the protractor and, and the measure. Now, if you're lucky, if you're lucky that this is uh, actually the same, simply put the protractor here and you measure from the center, then you measure your angle Y. Now, sometimes they can say that find the length of the arc. This is the arc from here to here. Find that length there. If they have given you maybe the radius, for example, radius is equal to seven, you can, you can just use your ruler and you try to get this one here, then try to get how many centimeters or how many units are in the radius. No so kind of a ratio. Then after you simply come and use your ruler and then you put it here and you approximate your answer. Look at the answer that you've got here and then the answer in the, in the alternatives. Mm. Mm. So this is concerning geometry and that is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Okay. Uh, I think I think we can proceed with this one here. Okay. Oh, one two zero. Uh huh. Set this is enough. Job. Intersection. Intersection. Okay. To take you through set a little bit. Um, I have some letters. I have some figures here. I don't know if you can annotate. If I have a set like this, this is uh, A, this is B. If I have no. A intersection B, this is mm. intersection. In other words, something that is common, mm. common to both. So if something is common to both, let me that it lies here. Mm. This is, that is what we have there. Now, if you're having, if you're having A union B, this is A, I mean, this is union. In other words, this means all. So I'm going to simply circle everywhere. So the shaded region is that. That is our union everywhere. Now, if you're having A intersection B, or, or let me just use A. Okay, A intersection B complement. This is A intersection B complement. What does this word complement mean? It means excluding, excluding B. A only. Yes, so you talk about A only, i.e. A only. And what is this one here? This is, this is going to be our A only, this one here. What is going to be our A only? So we are be waiter, we know no we know no waiter. You know gem. That is a only. <clears throat> now uh, let's go to this question here. We've been given that um, given that x is equal to three, four, five, six, and then y is equal to five, three, four, find the intersection of x. Well, the intersection intersection means something that is common, especially. Mm. What we're going to now. What is common? Can you cross out? Five is appearing in both. This one 
is the same as this. Mm -hmm. Three is the same as with this. Mm -hmm. And then four is the same as with this. So our intersection will actually be uh, x intersection y is the same as five, three, and four. And actually, this is the same as the set y alone. If you look at these elements here. Mm. So you simply come and circle the y. Mm. That's what they wanted. But um, what you need to know is that intersection means common numbers. Now, if they bring in number of elements, x intersection y, you just count them. Now, this is one, two, three, and we to three. Blair, Jolly. Wendy. Hey, question here in Dakar. <laughs> <laughs> Do they really bring these things? See, we are setting up a table. <laughs> <laughs> question, question here. Area of a sector. The radius of the circle is 3.5. Calculate the area of the sector. What is a sector? Going back to our circle here. A sector, a sector. Let me just draw this, try this one here. And then I have this one as my radius here. So this region here is what you call a sector. I could have made your chapati, if you bought a chapati. And you are going to give a fraction to uh, maybe a younger one, uh, my child, a good child, be like that. And you cut out only this one here. This sector is actually a fraction of the whole, if you can see this. Uh -huh. Yes, it's a fraction of the whole. Now, if that is the case, um, if you've been given the angle here, angle theta katugambe, I, I, I like using X and Y is a moment in the, <laughs> but they're all the same things. Angle X, total angles in a circle add up to what? 360. Ah, yes, that is correct. But who's <laughs> engaged? <laughs> it's got 360 degrees. Now, if it is 360 degrees, it means that area of a circle, you already say that it is equal to pi R squared. This one here, which means that the fraction of this will actually be equal to our angle X divided by 360 times area of a circle. So that is what you call area of a sector. Uh, this one here, I said that this is what you call the arc length from here to there. That is the arc length. The arc is something like a curve. Well, if you remember architecture, there was someone is going for you a house plan, there's those arcs there, blah, blah. So the arc is just a circle. So the arc length is this. And this one is also a fraction of the circumference. But to not to, just, not to, for, not to worry about all that math, there's a lot I say that you can just use your ruler and approximate. If you know the radius, for example, use the ruler to approximate. Now, going back to our question here, going back to our question here, our radius is equal to 3.5. Our angle is equal to 72 degrees. So our area of the sector will be equal to the angle of theta divided by 360 times I R squared. So this will be the same as 72 divided by 360 times 22 out of 7 times 3.5 and then the square. Ah, you can second come here. Okay. You can second come here. So you can do the math later on. But just use what you've been doing. 
just do what you've been doing, but um, always try to simplify your work. Let's go to this other number here. It is saying that you have 450 kilograms to one ton in its simplest form. This is about expressing units. In other words, you've been given ratios. You've been given ratios. So what do we do here? We have 450 to one ton. How many kilograms are in one ton? 1,000. Okay, that is correct. So we see this is the same as 450 to 1,000. And by the way, what thing, one thing that I didn't tell you that in case you have one to two, this is the same as writing it as uh, one out of two. Okay. Yes, in case you have X to Y, it is the same as X over Y, like that. Mm -hmm. Now, now here we have kilograms and tons. We cannot express them until when these units are the same. Kilograms, kilograms. That's why you've done this. So in case you have 450 divided by 1,000, you cross out of this, you mean with 45 by five, you get nine by five, you get 20. And this is the same you as Yes? I thought you moved zeros. Hey, it is the same thing. It is the same thing. But uh, this is the same as uh, from here. This is one, two, three. So you will get your zero, zero point four, uh, five, zero. But now the question, look at the question. It is given in terms of ratios. So if it is ratios, you simply try to simplify. You try to simplify. And here, I'll simply have, instead of writing this one here, I'll simply have um, sorry. I'll simply try to simplify this. Uh, uh, remember, as a ratio, it's same as 450. To 1000. So I have to simplify this divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by this, divide by this. Now, instead of doing it like that, I would prefer to use it like this. Uh -huh. but, but if this one cancels out with this, then by five, I get nine, by five, I get 20. So nine out of 20. And this one is cannot be divided anymore. Uh -huh. So I will simply end up this one as being nine to 20 as my ratio. Uh, okay. yes. So that is what I'm having here as my answer. 9 to 20, yes, it is here. Wow. Uh -huh. Kali, um, something else here. Can I know this day? Let's see that the numbers are still many, but we can first answer this data sufficiency. Uh, first of all, maybe uh, I, I hope that Wilson can answer this. The state part, Wilson loves it. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, it is. Um, is A intersection B complement? Perfect. <laughs> but you thought about A and B. How about the C? Since since this is with A and B, C is not intersected at all. Eh? Uh, so it's A intersection B complement intersection C. Uh, I think the shaded region here, the C is not, the C is out. The C is out, yes. So if the C is out, then it means that uh, we are ignoring the C. So the answer, the answer is, is, is a C. The answer is a C. 
Eh. Is there any... oh. Yes, yes. This one right. here means uh, C not included. You're right. C not included. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this one is, uh, is, this is a straight line. Now, one thing that you need to remember about this is that equation of a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c. Where this m here is the slope. And uh, the number before the y must be a one. So there's a one here, which is not shown there because it changes nothing. Now, if you look at this equation here, it is the same as y. If I bring the x first, three out of two of x, then minus, or plus negative five out of two. So this is same as y is equal to mx plus c, meaning that our slope is actually uh, three over two, which is the same as 1.5. One remainder one. So it is one and a half. So the answer here is this one here. But this one here, this one I think was just brought in just as a, by the way, because uh, <laughs> it is uh, just brought in, just, just need to remember the equation of the straight line, that's all. There's no hiding, there's no shortcut here. So uh, line is given by that. Uh, uh, still, uh, Wilson, can you help us on this number here? I think I can skip it. Kindly don't skip. <laughs> okay, remember operation is we look we, we looked at yes. we looked Man, at I've been off. My network is bad. <laughs> sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. But but we looked we looked at something similar like this during the day. Yes. Operation is. Mm -hmm. hey, okay, yes. Uh -huh. uh, we have the operation arrow defined by A R B is equal to the smaller of the two numbers A and B. So I just need someone to, to remind us about this. So that arrow is just uh, an operator, same as yeah. like a star, like a what? Yes. We start yes. with the brackets. Uh -huh, yes. Our A will be a third, and our B will be one. Uh -huh, yes. So if we, 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 move, we, we, we do what? A third times one over. Look, look at this. They will define it like this. We go to the smaller of the two numbers, mm. A and B. So meaning is equal to at, at, eh? yes. what is small? Yes. Seven. So, so the whole of this is the same as a third. Yes, that is correct. Now, if you remember, if you replace this, the whole of this one by a third, then we'll be having one over eight to a third. Again, you define mm. the smaller. This is again a third. A third. Okay. Um, that is how you. Now, there is only one problem that I've seen. The, the answer is that third. No, no, no. Okay. The, the problem that I've seen is this. Eh? That um, mm. let me just share this again and I show you. If I have one over one and one over two, which one is smaller than the other?
with the biggest denominator is the smaller. Yes, that is that is that is as uh, simple as simple as that. Now, a third and one over seven. What do you think is the smaller one? One over seven. Yes. Yeah, so this is supposed to be one over seven. Yes. Yes. So likewise, even here, this the whole of this one here will be the same as one over seven, and then you have one mm. over eight to that. Yes. Again, you define this is a, this is b, the smaller of the two. Mm. One over eight. So the answer is this. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, about bearings, there's also still about angles. Uh, let me paste it here. Bearings. Um, one thing that I need you to remember about bearings is this. Uh, first of all, if I take you back to geometry, parallel angles. Uh, if you have parallel lines, parallel lines. Uh, Grace, do you remember parallel lines? Ah, the network is very poor. Line is that can never meet. Eh? Yes, line is that never meet. Very good. So these are parallel lines. Now, if those lines never meet, if I cross this, it means that I'm going to come up with a letter Z. Mm. Now, whenever I come up with the letter Z, this angle here is always the same as this angle here. Mm, you're right. So this angle here is the same as this angle here. Likewise, this angle Y is the same as this angle Y because they're alternating. And then also, since these angles X and Y lie on a straight line, you can still say that Y plus X is the same as 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, let me take you back to, to, to the bearings. Now, one thing that I need to, you to remember about bearings is this, that I will always pay much attention to this word here, from, from. That is the most important word here. Mm -hmm. Now, the word from, when, when you read the question which is having bearing, we have from, that is where we put our plotting compass. So in case we have our compass like this, this is where we have our chu. So P and chu from chu, we put it at chu. And we always measure angles from the north. This is our north. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you measure 60 degrees. This is 0, 060 0 degrees, 0, 060. So, if you know that this is um, zero, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and then 360. Mm. Mm. That, that, that one we know. So meaning that our 60 is between 90 and zero. Mm. So from the north going to this, this is 60 degrees. Mm. And the bearings are always written to three digits. If you get two, Degrees, this is the same as zero, zero, two degrees. Mm. Now, now, they are saying that P is at a bearing of 60 from Q. Bearing of 260. Um, yes, this, I just want to, oops. Just wanted to do a big diagram here. Okay, uh, let me just put mm. my... Let me just put my P here. So my P, let me use a different color. Use a different color. My P is going to be somewhere here. It is going to be there. So now the question says that, what is the bearing of Chu from P? So from P, that is why we put our protractor and then we measure the angles from there until when we reach here. Bearing, it is like this, that uh, Blair is at point P 
Uh, Wilson mm -hmm. is at point two. If you're looking at, if two is looking at P, in which direction is it supposed to look? Over and we we'll always mm -hmm. we we'll always turn, we we'll always turn, beginning from the north. You start from the north, then you go round, clockwise. So from from two, that's why I began from the north, going like this. Mm. But then even from P, I'm beginning from the north going like this. Mm. Now, now, <clears throat> if that is the case, then uh, then sorry. Then uh, our angle property is now coming. That I have my straight line because these are all these ones are pointing to the north. So this mm. angle here is 60 degrees. This angle here is 60 degrees. So they wanted the angle from here up to there. But at least we know that on a straight line, you have 180 degrees. Forward. So 180 plus 60, we add, we get to 40 degrees. So our answer is this. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing here is the word from. That, that is the most important thing. Uh -huh. There are some other questions which are a little bit detailed. I saw one sent me an inbox message in WhatsApp. And it was something still bigger than this. But the best thing is knowing where to start from. The word from. Uh, I want you to... I want, I want to end, but I wanted to end with this. Um, I, I just want you to end, I mean, to know this at least, because we may not meet again, uh, unless if something else happens. But I just wanted you to remember this. I just want to end with this divisibility. Divisibility. Telling that a number is divisible by another. That is what divisibility means. In other words, a number is divisible by two if how do you tell that a number is divisible by two? It's an even number. Yes? Yeah. It's an even number. If it is an even number, yes, that is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, if it's an even number, or ends with zero, two, four, six, and eight. How about, how do you tell that a number is divisible by three? If the sum of the digits is divisible, by three, Iggy, for example, uh, 27. If you had two plus nine, I mean seven, you get nine. And nine by three is the same as three. So that number is divisible. How do you tell that the number is divisible by four? If the last two digits, are divisible mm. by two. An example is maybe 284,994, uh, four, like that. So these last two numbers here, 84 divisible by four, we shall get 42. So the whole of this number is divisible by four. 
How do you tell that a number is divisible by five? If the last digit is five, is a okay. zero or five? If the last digit is a zero or a five, for example, 10, for example, 15. So the last digit is a zero. 210, 415, like that. And then by six, if divisible by two and also by three. And then eight, <laughs> if the last three digits are divisible by eight. And then I'm going to end by nine. If divisible by both are three and the three and nine. Let me say three and yeah, if it is by three. Yes, I wanted to end with that. Maybe you can, you, maybe, I don't know whether you can take a screenshot or I'm going to send you this document. Yes, just to refer to. Yes, to refer to. Okay. Uh, there's a lot to look at. The time is unlimited. But... Uh, Maybe I can end with this one here. Okay, let me end with these two here. Yes, to conclude. Uh -huh. uh, can someone work out for us this? One or nine? I am not the one. <laughs> uh, um, I think. Yes, please. As you say that if we are given such, we can use one of those answers. Mm. To see if we can that equation and get a zero. Yes. So we can say uh -huh. uh, A uh -huh. can start with A and say negative seven squared, that is seven squared, which is 49. Mm -hmm. Plus five, five times uh, negative seven, it's uh, 35. Uh -huh. So plus negative 35, then minus, minus 84. Minus 84. So automatically, negative and negative will be giving us more bigger number. So this one will not, yes. give, us, will yeah. not give us zero. So which yes. means that, which means that when, anyway, we have negative seven. That number is out. It's a, neg out. a negative. Yes. Uh -huh. Let's try out the the positive seven. Positive seven. Mm -hmm. That will be forty nine plus thirty five. Uh -huh. Yes, seven. Uh, yes, hold on. Is around eighty four. Uh -huh. Eighty four minus eighty four zero. This is uh, forty nine plus. Uh, five times seven. This is uh, plus eight. Uh, no, thirty-five. Five minus eighty-four. Uh -huh, minus eighty-four. It will be cancelling out. Yes. So, so we end up with zero. Yes. So our answer should either be a seven. So anyway, there's a positive seven. Then these are possible answers. Mm. So we are remaining with uh, we have positive 12, negative 12. Which one should we begin with? Negative 12. Uh, negative 12. <clears throat> negative 12. I think for negative, okay. Negative, okay, negative 12. Uh, let's begin with negative 12. So how, what is 12 squared? 44. We have 144. 
plus five times negative 12, negative, negative 60, minus 84. When you add this plus this, we shall have 144 negative. So zero. So is equal to zero. So our answer, Terry could in the body must apply this thing. Our body must doesn't apply because this is an equation. Yeah, okay. Unless if there was a bracket. Mm -hmm. Yes, unless if there's a bracket. Uh -huh. Then this one here. 15 women need 100 minutes to clean a hole. How long does it take 20 women at the same rate to do the same job? Fifteen. Oh, 15. If fifteen women need a hundred, how long will it take one woman? Uh -huh, yes. What? Yes. Uh -huh, fifteen women take one hundred minutes. Then one woman. Uh huh. One woman will a hundred over fifteen. A hundred over fifteen. Now, before you continue, let me cut you short. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this is how it is supposed to be ideally. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in a reality, does it make yeah. does it make sense that if fifteen women take a hundred minutes, will yeah. actually one woman take less than a hundred minutes? Yes. No. Huh? If fifteen take a hundred, no, one woman will take more. Yes, one woman must yes. take more. Mm. <laughs> so that is where now logic comes in. But ideally, this is how it is supposed to be. But as I try to do this, you try to relate with the reality and you see. Okay, mm -hmm. so 15 women uh, take 100 minutes. That means that one woman will simply take 100 minutes times what the 15 were taking. So this is the same as 100 per thousand mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. How about um, the 20? Since they're increasing in number, then the time has to reduce. So we have 15 divided by 20, yeah. and the answer is 75 yeah, okay. minutes, which is this. But now you can't come back. Can't come back one. Nice. Thank hey, you. But um, but uh, but uh, but before you conclude, there's also this other number here. Function is actually mm -hmm. actually is very good day. Is very good day. Can I solo? Can I solo? Okay. For functions, um, uh, for functions, we have f of x, for example, is equal to x plus one, and then we have g of x is equal to maybe. Um, Let's say for x. Now, if you have a question which says that find part f of two, where there is two, we simply put it there the x. I'm mean, so where there's x, we put it there the two. So this is the same as two times two. two. Then plus one. one is the same as four plus one is the same as five. five. If you have g of negative two, where there's x, we put the negative two. So this is the same as four times negative two, which should give us negative eight. Okay, now if we have f of g of one, in this case, what do we do? You begin with g of one. Yes, so our g of x is equal to four. X, our g of one will be equal to four times one, which will give us four times one, the same as a four. Now, which means therefore that our g of one, f of this is the same as f of four. four. But our f of x is the same as two x plus one. So our f of four, where there is x, we put there a four. So this is the same as two times four, then plus one, eight plus one, which gives us a nine. How about if it was um, g of f of one, what would we do? With F one. Yes. Start with F one. 
Uh -huh, yes, we start with F1. So this is same as two into one plus one, which is the same as two plus one, which is the same as three. Yeah. Implying that our G of F1 is the same as G of three, which is the same as four times three, which gives us five. Okay. Um, I hope that you've gone through the guide. The guide is at the end. I sent you this in on WhatsApp. So that's what I got. You can go through the other parts as well. Try to relate. I know time is not uh, enough. An exam is an exam. That's what I understand. <laughs> uh. No matter who's doing it, it is. it remains an exam. But all the best. I wish you a, a great night. All right, that but one. Thank you. On yes, please. I didn't get this on WhatsApp. Sure. I sent you. You can check again. Let me send that to you again in your inbox. Okay. All right. If, oh, there was a group maybe that I wasn't part of. Hey. All right. All right. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you.